Pink. You know what I mean? Pink, pink. <laughs> <laughs> If I hadn't got a parole. So how did that feel for you, like as a father now? Like, so you got four years and taken away from your kids. How old were your kids? Yeah, that was for me. Kids are only young, weren't they? Yeah, they were very young. I went to jail when they were babies. I've landed in that one before. So, oh my God, what's this? It was disgusting. I started thinking that about my kids, man. I was like, it was just heartbreaking, you know what I mean? But it, it was all my own doing. He'd be a good dad to the kids and stuff like that. That's what I was telling myself. And I did get out and try, like, but within, within a few months, I was back at it. God knows what's been said and all that, but someone's been waiting outside for him and suck his head off at the shot, you know what I mean? This podcast is sponsored by Riddle Hulk Builders. I want to inspire people to train so they can see the power of exercise and what it can do for the brain. Do you want to change your lifestyle? Your outlook on life, physique, and have a laugh while doing so? I don't take myself too seriously. I like to create a fun atmosphere in the gym. Working alongside some brilliant boxing coaches in Hailwood ABC. It's about bringing the community together. In Sinetico Fitness Centre, there's boxing based fitness classes and boss PTs. We have a female only boxing boogie with a DJ too. I've got a big mouth and a big heart. I like to speak my mind, encourage others, and help people to open up. There's a podcast coming, a documentary. I've used sport and boxing to fight my demons. It can help you fight yours. Welcome to the Fighting Demons podcast with me, your host, John Edge. My co-host, Matty Edge. Today's guest is Lee Hall. He's got a colourful past, to say the least. Why is your past so colourful, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> It, I'd say it's been a bit colourful like <laughs> up and down but yeah it's, I'd say it's colourful uh, just to some of the stuff I've been involved in and where I've been and where I'm going yeah quite Isn't a good it? and bad lad then in, in different ways would you say very yeah yeah. so how, how did how did like your childhood kind of go like how did it all start off I grew up in the pure late so it was the 80s where I properly grew up and it was times where it really hard then you know what I mean so, so and like the talk stuff rights and all that then as well wasn't it waking up most mornings to go to school I'd also be like a warehouse <laughs> <laughs> you know the riots that the, the took place sort of at, the, at the front line was the top of Parliament Street and all, all the area down by the Docklands and that like where we are now yeah. we're all left we're, we're unattended and people were just helping themselves it was a free for all yeah all, all, the, the, all the police attention would have been on just a little bit up the road Parliament Street yeah so basically that would have been so that that's how, how things went for a, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So yeah. what was your family dynamic like growing up then? Yeah, I grew up with my mum and dad. Both come from big families. They've got me, my dad's got a lot of brothers and sisters. My mum's got a lot of sisters and a couple of brothers. So they're from big families. So like, well, we were only we only had a small. There was only me, and my mum, dad, and my sister. Yeah, and like a couple of years later, about ten years later, my other sister come along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know, we grew up in it at time. You know, at the time it was the eighties. Where you know, ever, ever, no, really, no one had nothing. Know what I mean? So, like yeah, everything yeah. you had, you were grateful for. Yeah. What did you do with like your school and that? Like, did you do anything in school? Yeah, I went to I went to my local school where in the Pearl East, which is like Shawfield. So I, I went went there. I was there. So like, I left a little bit early. You know what I mean? Because that's where. What age did you leave school? I, I I got kicked out when I was basically fifteen. Yeah, well, I I didn't get kicked out, but I just left due to my bad behaviour, starting to get into that pattern of bad behaviour. But I was always getting into trouble and stuff. What like age that. was that around? About fifty, about fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I left in fifty. I left before I should have left. Yeah, that year. So what yeah. did you do then when you left school? Yeah, to be honest, just lit dust about. Uh, I did try little bits of work and little jobs and whatever, but could never stick to nothing. To be honest, I win. I was always, I always had me, 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 my mind on something else. You know what I mean? It was yeah, always yeah, like yeah. distracted very easily. So you know. So what did you do then, Lee? So you let, have you left school and been really doing much? So you, you're knocking like sixteen now, aren't you? Yeah. What did you, what did you do then? What did you start getting into then? Starts getting into crime. That led to other crime, which would have been drugs, and that, and that's that's that fat farm. The crime I was involved in. Then you know what I mean? I went. That was it. So what year are we talking now, Lee? If you're like 16, what year are we talking? 1992. 92? Yeah. Okay, sounds. So, around 92. 
what was you, what was you getting up to then? Because we were talking like sort of the rave scene. Leave yeah, school, the yeah. Fir- the first the first drugs I got involved in would have been the uh, sp- like party drugs, Amph- amphetamines and ecstasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. at the time, coke ain't weren't really a thing. Anyone who had coke was considered like a millionaire or yeah, something at the time. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was a, the only drugs that were available on the streets at the time would have been crack and heroin, and they would have been part your party drugs like your, your amphetamines and your ease and your cannabis. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's like sips sort of, were a big thing in the early and 90s. LSD, yeah, yeah, LSD. The, LSD was a really yeah. big thing, <laughs> <laughs> and I've had me fish. <laughs> <laughs> so because like because you were going out a bit earlier than me so i started going out to like 94 you know what i mean yeah. so where was you going then 92 uh, yeah doc yeah doc yeah. yeah yeah same as me when yeah. i was and the states yeah. used to go to states as well because as you as you as you would have remembered back then somewhere would be open for four five six months there'd be a really bad incident in there something of incidents of violence someone gets stabbed or a really good beating the doors will get shot they'll get us they get a like uh, shut down for five six weeks reopen under another name so everyone just went somewhere else so it was usually the the state or the drone where you'd end up and like the yeah. same thing would happen to them they'd get shut down so you then and that'd get open it was like a medical round yeah. of, of clubs <laughs> the, you know what uh, I mean? the early nowhere, 90s was it was bad wasn't it it was nowhere like, ever really open for, yeah. a, for like a, 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 a two-year period, period yeah. or not and it yeah, was just it was, constantly stop start stop start yeah it was always around three months wasn't it you know what i mean you'd had a lot of door wars so in the, in the early 90s obviously we had the drugs coming in the dormant were controlling the, the drugs People like, like us, young ravers, started grafting them for the doorman. Yeah, basically, whoever, whoever, cons- bullies, whoever controlled the doors controlled the the, 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 the drugs. Yeah. in in the in in the in, vital, in the nightclubs they were working around. Yeah. yeah, but most of the most of the door firms grew bigger and bigger. Yeah. and they 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 probably own three or four of them big clubs. So basically, whoever had it all had it all. And yeah, one well, monopolies. I think one big firm took it over in the end after a long time. Because the, yeah. uh, the the door firms when like we were going out. They were like, they were basically hard fellas, mate. You know what I mean? Like, if, you, if someone was hard or well known, they'd come up and they'd fucking take a door. Do you know what I mean? They'd just yeah. come up and say, you can't do that now. But back then, someone would just walk up and name and he'd just fucking bang a few people out and he'd end up taking that fucking door over, that's controlling it. the drugs. You know yeah. what I mean? And then he'd have everyone in there grafting the drugs for them. That's the way it was. It was big time. There was a lot of money involved mm-hmm. in it. And then what you had them. So the early 90s, it was just like faces, people who were well-known. Like, Dorman never had badges back then. They were just yeah, hard fellas, Xboxers, mm-hmm. you know, people like that who were well-known and had big reputations, you know what I mean? And then they started getting into the doors. And then you had, like, as the later started coming on, the grafters, because they couldn't fight them, started using guns and stuff, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when all the guns come in, the door wars, and the security firms started killing each other and all that. And it just, that's when the SIA yeah. later yeah. on come in. Some of the they... incidents where I've been involved, I've been out with groups of lads, uh, and the doorman, but you're not coming in here, blah, blah, blah. And it's kicked off. There's been a big fight, and like one of the lads who've been with us has gone and got a car and put it right through the door and yeah. took about five of them out, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's because you can't you can't really fight back with them because they were yeah. big big hard lads. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. today's door door firms, that you know that they're, they're not unlike them. And like half the time, if you were sold off by one of them doormen, you'd listen listen to what they said and walk away. You know what I mean? But now if someone tells you off, it's like who are you talking to? Yeah, back then it was like it was a whole different ball game. Even when I worked the doors, I started working the doors in like two thousand, and even then. It was it was still quite rough. Mm-hmm. I think they, it all culminated around two thousand and five when that uh, I think the, the SIA come in with the badges and then and then it, like they were taking door firms basically got shut down and then they were like proper organized companies then weren't they and like so when you go to town now the doorman at like the doorman when we were you know what I mean they're yeah, not like yeah. faces and names and hard people they're just most of the time they're from out of town so like a lot of people in Liverpool work in Manchester Manchester work in Liverpool and they just took away that thing of like you know in the doorman and type of stuff do you know what I mean so because uh, it was it was a bad time on it in the clubs because like yeah. The, like some of the violence that happened in clubs like it was big you know what I mean and then like as he said they, they close it down change the licensee rename the club open it back up again and then three months later something else had happened bad shut it down you know what I mean and it was yeah. just like apply for new licenses and it was that was the way it was so you'd, you'd club hop wouldn't you yeah to like, like different that, clubs that, that's the, it happened it happened every, everywhere got a, there weren't one, one one like big club in the city that never got affected by it yeah. everywhere got it and like there was there was never nowhere up with the, I think the cream I watched the documentary think, about think, the cream on sand. Basically, they it happened to them a few times and they had a meeting and they're they're honest they're like because of the door no the door the, the, the people got cha- going in changing the door and they had the meeting said look this is not te- this is not like 
So people can't go into Tesco's and change the security. So that they changed the, the finger of it all. They, 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 they made it solid, know what I mean? So yeah. they took it upon us. It was like, it's a legit business. So you, you can't have a criminal coming in and saying, I'm having some of this. Yeah. So yeah, they've yeah. done away with it all and Cream, Cream were one of the first people to do it. I watched the documentary on that. So they instigated it all. How they did it, yeah. So I, think, that was, I think one of the one of the main doors that that, that or clubs that stayed open right throughout it was uh, the old five one because that was the Lynch's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they are, they, they, like, they they did have their own door firm. That's what I'm they saying. They didn't have an outside. This crew. is what I'm trying to say. They you are, see, the, uh, John Lynch, who we worked for, who who owned the old five one, he owned like uh, Garland's Passion Sunrise, and uh, and then his family owned like um like um, G Bar and Society and a few other places, and we all worked for them. We never worked for another firm. We were all in house. Mm-hmm. So I think because he had such a strong door, that's why the club survived. Because no other club, uh, uh, they always shutting and stuff like that. You know what yeah. I mean? And changing their yeah. names and that. That was one of the longest standing clubs. Well, I think you know what I mean. Well, one of my things in the club, like we, we used to, we, we we used to do the graft in the club, like sell the pills and the the, the whiz and that, and like. We we always had the go to man in on the door in one of them places and, and at the time it was for all uh, you know it, it was and it's not we used to we used to we used to box them forty quid off and that was our rent to play in there you know what I mean so that uh, the, a doorman would have a group every doorman who, who was in that club would have someone who did who, who yeah was, yeah yeah was, they'd have their own grafter in there plus they'd have someone paying them rent of course, you know what I mean yeah. so they all they all don't know that, but like that but what we got out of that if someone had like we had any mood or anything we could go to them and like say yeah what's happening and like you go over and, yeah and so but, so but sometimes they wouldn't you know what I mean mm. so. It was so always that. If we take it up now, Lee, you, you're into like the 90s and that. So, say we get to like sort of about 98, what, what, any, 98, 99? Yeah, by, 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 by 90, by, by 96, uh, uh, the, 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 the going out drugs and all that, they, they were, you know. Well, yeah, I thought it shut in 96, yeah, didn't it? Going up to there, but the, the, the level of drugs, you know, the selling pills and that, whatever, you weren't making, you couldn't make much money. You can make money, but you could, I wanted more. And the, the only way to get it was by jumping on around the going into the other stuff, the brand and the the, the coke here. So I ended up doing a round down where, where we're from, Troxtiff, and you know, you get a get a boom and you, you can make a lot of money, you know what I mean? But the the, the, the other thing that come with it like was was the one thing, it's all it's all good and that have making all the money, but behind the scenes there's a lot of stuff goes on, like a lot of badness. People look to looking to rob you, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you some days you get called out for a call, you'd be in the car, you go up to save them and you'd have some lunatic run out run out the NC with the big blade, lads smashing the window up. <laughs> and you're like, get off, you know what I mean? But you know, I've been caught flat footed a few times, like I managed to get away, but it's scary, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. you know, he was a well known fella. If he, 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 if he ate you, lad, he'd probably knock you into next year, but he was one of the type of lad, guys you were looking to back get. It. So when you're going out every day in the car, you haven't got to worry about the police. You've got to worry about them. <laughs> them yeah. people looking to get you. So, you know, I just got into that, and that, that was that was it, really. And, and like, the money, the money, the money's so ridiculous, you know what I mean? Yeah. From that, from selling the pills and that to so going into that, the money was just like on a, on a totally different level. So, from doing that then and, and making all the money, what year are you talking now? Have you got have you got kids by now or? Yeah, but around them, I just I just had um, f- my first kid, she's a girl, Georgia. She, uh, I had there, uh, and then about a year later, about just over a year later, Michael Michael come. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and like that didn't even stop me. You know, like I thought that would just calm me down a bit, and it just never. You know what I mean? And. Uh, I just, I just went into bigger things, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. you start off doing it street level, then the next thing, you, you're giving it to the kids at the level. And you know what you know how it goes, don't yeah. you? It's just one thing after another. And then you're still having all the stuff, all the same crap, because, you, you know, now, now even, though you're bigger, not, even though you're not doing it on the streets, having to worry about getting bumped by them, you've got robbers in the city who are just looking to bump grafters, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> But you've also got the police as well, so you, you've always got to sleep with, like... Go to bed with like an an exit to side the bed or something. Know what I mean? It's, you know, it's not. It ain't a comfy life. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It might it might look comfy that you know I've got cat money and whatever, but it isn't. Know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So having that like sort of high fast life, <laughs> it all come crashing down, didn't it? Yeah. Well, I got nicked, didn't I? So, but what's happened now is, I'm, the lads, the, the lads are out serving, serving up in the car. I've jumped in with them to go somewhere. Uh, 
he said, yeah, I'll just see this punt that's pulled over and seen this black girl, Jenny, next thing. She's gone there. And she's, you wouldn't even question it, like, because we're the mixed race, lad. And he's gone, this is my cousin, Jake from Birmingham. I'll remember, Jake from Birmingham, he's gone, I like geese, I've gone, all right. And he's gone, uh, he's got some T-shirts there. And he's shoving the lads in the front of him. And I'm, I'm like, just like, just look, looking. And he goes, uh, do you want one? I've got a big one here, I'll fit you. And I've gone, see you. Well, go ahead, I'll have that. And what you want, he said, to, to be, I've gone, yeah, I sort him out to the kid in the car. And basically by me telling him to give him two brown lads, I've, I've supplied him. Wow. That's that's the supply, so that's what I got, got Nick for, supplying, yeah, supplying class A's. That, wow. that, on. But they had followed us for ages. They had, they had CCTV on, the, like, no no cameras, pictures yeah. of us by phone boxes, meeting the lads. Me, they had pictures of me meeting the lads who were driving the cars, stuff like that, you know what I mean? They were right on it, like, you know what I mean? So they just don't have you for doing that one server up. Yeah. They, like, they build a pattern of yeah. a pattern up of where I'm meeting them on a regular basis. They've got cameras everywhere, like snappers. So how long did you get for that then, Lee? Do you know what? I went to jail, they gave me a day under four years, which, Fucking hell. which is like, <laughs> the only reason, if you get four, I, at the time, if you got four or over for drugs, it was a parole sentence. So because it was my first one, he never gave me that. He said, I'm going to give you four years because of your role in it and blah, blah, blah. But he said, hey, I'm going to keep it off the parole system. So basically that's what, and I played the guilty right away. But it was lucky, like, you know what I mean? Could have yeah. got, easy got four and a half, four. And like, that means I might have had to stay in it eight months longer to, to get, if yeah. I hadn't got a parole. So how did that feel for you, like, as a father now? Like, so you got four years and taken away from your kids. How old were your kids? Yeah, that was for me. Kids were only young, weren't they? Yeah, they were very young, you know what I mean? I went to, I went to, I went to, I went to I went to jail when they were babies, you know what I mean? They were only like babies and uh, I'm, I'm in Walton and like I've landed in that Walton before. So, oh my God, what's this? It was disgusting, you know what I mean? It's dead old, everything's dead old in there. Like the, the cells are horrible. Most of the cells in Walton, they've, they've, you know, like the perspex seating in them, they're gone. So most of the cells have got car, like crisp box cardboard, pop, pop, it's freezing in there, you know what I mean? It was winter then as well. You get two little blankets, oh, it was disgusting. And I thought, this is horrible. And like, when you're in there, I started thinking that about my kids and I was like, you know, it, just cut, it, it, it was just heartbreaking, you know what I mean? But it, it was all my own doing. Like, mm -hmm. And like, it, it, that didn't even lay me because I still got out and went at it again. I know, what I was yeah. really going to say, so when you got out, didn't you feel like, you know, that, that was enough to deter you at all? Well, you, you, you say, you, basically, I was, I was telling me, I, yeah, basically I was telling myself that like, like, like uh, I'll get out and I'll be, be a good dad to the kids and stuff like that. That's what I was telling myself and I did get out and try like, but within, within a few months I was back at it. Yeah. And this time it was at a totally different level. It was like at an wholesale level now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, which I was up and down the country as well. So I, I didn't really see much of my kids, you know what I mean? Like I'd see them, get them, take them out somewhere, buy them stuff. You know what I mean? Thinking that's enough yeah. buying them stuff, but yeah, you, know, you, can't, you can't replace time with yeah, money. Can yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when you grow up and you haven't got much money, you think my money's everything in it, but it's yeah, not. Time's it's not. the most precious thing, Time's isn't it? The, yeah, Do definitely, you know what I mean? definitely. Mm -hmm. So from from getting out then and then getting back into crime, like how long did that last for? Like living that like sort of high life again? Uh, I got out since two thousand and one. I was back in by. Uh, I got nicked again in summer, two four, down south, uh, down Ipswich switchways, and they, they, they put me in, they, they remanded me in custody for a section 18. Some kid owed us money, and uh, I've jumped out the car to him and said, what's happening? He's with his sister, blah, blah. I said, what's happening? He's gone, oh, we'll sort it out, and I've given him a slap, you know. <laughs> I've given him a... So next thing, I've got off thinking I'm not of it. Then I woke up in the morning, the door's gone in, boom, boom, boom. And I thought, fucking hell, it's a bit heavy in there, I'm police in, in a flat room, in a flat arm police. They took me and my mate. What they've done is now they've took me, they've took him, uh, they bugged his car up, boom, 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 let him out, give him the car back, kept me in. And uh, they put me in jail down and they put me in Norwich, Nick. And then not, I was, they, and as soon as I got in Norwich, they put me in the segregation. So I'm, I'm thinking, this is a bit out of order, isn't it? But so, what, so what's that like being in there? Segregation, basically, you you kept away from everyone. You, you just put in a cell and you get a sink and a bed and a toilet. That's it. You don't even get a table and chair. You get you don't have nothing in there. And uh, yeah. yeah, and you get no radio. You're just in there and they let you out for an hour every morning, about half eight till, till half nine. Walk around a little tiny cage yard about the size of this room. Okay, um, they had me in there for a couple of weeks and I was. Uh, writing complaints to the governor, blah, blah, blah. So basically they said, 
de sat for det, for, for, I had a lot of influence in that area, the knowledge. So basically what they wanted to do, they, was, they sent me down to Chelmsford, Essex, Essex. So I landed down there, boom, fourth. They said, we've got, you're, you're all right here, we're going to put you on normal location and all that. So I got put, put up put up there. Was in that jail, it was a bit a bit different than up north, you know what yeah. I mean? Down south jails are a lot different, you know what I mean? The people are different. Uh, it's... I'd say I'd say it was a lot worse for in Walton in Walton compared to any jail. There's nobody to jail like it. Know what I mean? Yeah. There's nothing. The, the, like the the smackheads in Walton prison rule. Really, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. The no, ruthless. Weird, yeah, because uh, <laughs> the ruthless. One of, one of me I did buy and sell anyone. Same, yeah, know what I mean? But down south, the, the the people who were on the drugs down there aren't like that. They just all like sit, sit in the cells, little. It's not like it's not unlike Walton, so it's it's a lot slower. In Walton, it's a million miles an hour the way yeah. the way people move around in, in in down there. It's that just that chill, like thingy, lazy. You know, you get little gangs of you know, in because it's Chelmsford, it's by Essex, so you got you get loads of kids getting shipped out from uh, in London, loads of gangbangers, so you get loads of gangs, kids getting shipped to like shipped there, so they're all there fucking acting moody, blah blah blah. It, it was a decent jail, you know what I mean? I, I was down there and like no one would speak to me because I was a scouser because they all thought I'd done so moody. Yeah. So, yeah, not messing this. So, <laughs> so I, was, I, I used to think, fucking hell, it's a bit moody and then no one speaks to you. And then uh, the, these three traveling lads, Sweeney, family of Sweeney's, they're called, they, they, they was they, them like who started speaking to me and then uh, sound lads, mates, and then I sp used to have it with these uh, cut. Yugoslavian lads as well, they they were in there with oh they'd done something naughty, you know what I mean? These these gypsy lads had done something naughty, but they they were all, all the cockney lads and that must cut cut for I was a scouser down there, been shipped down there that I was a wrong and all sort of me. It's honest, it's mad. Oh, no. Yeah. And then like I, I managed to get me I showed one of them what I was in for. One of them comes to me, said, What are you doing for? I said, showed them the rear charge sheets and they were like, Fucking hell, bro. We said that from saying you're a bacon. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, it was a bit a bit moody. But uh, I got I got out, but I won me I won me case anyway. What year did you get out? I was only in there four months. I won me case, yeah, on that. So next thing I've got out, and while I've been, while I've got out, so as I said before, they booked the Darren's car, and like while I've been away in that four months now, they put a obo on them on the book card and that, and they've, they've only uh, nicked them haven't they, with loads with the loads with put cameras on the stash and all that. Know what I mean? Yeah. They knew where they was. They knew how much wow. stuff they were taking by out. They were counting the stash every day. You no, know, like going there every day and counting what was going in and out of it. Wow. So they knew everything. So basically, that's what happened. They put an abo on them, called that in, nicked all of them, let me go, and then within a week I'm home, and like the police come to us and nick me. Uh, they've nicked me, took me all the way down back down to Norwich. Put, put me on air, put me in the magistrate. Magistrates remanded me. It comes to Friday now, they've took me to Crown to get committed to trial because all them, they're, for they're getting, I'm fast tracked now because they're already committed to the trial. Yeah, so I'm, I'm chasing yeah. them. So when I've got there now, the, the, the judge who was going to be doing the case read all, they read the, read the charge sheets out, the evidence, what, what, the, and the judge just said, look, I can't, I can't put him on remand for this. This, this is not a, he just said, I can't put him on, I can't put him in custody for this, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. He said, we're going to set a date for the, uh, what's it called, to get the case dismissed, blah, blah, blah. So that was about four months away. So they let me out. I've gone home, started started doing what I, <laughs> what I know again. Yeah. <laughs> While I'm on remand, like a divvy. I never got caught, but, uh, you know, that's also a new, new lad, so yeah. I just got back on it. And then... Uh, Basically, I've gone to the pre trial uh, the, to get the case dismissed there, uh, and now they were very confident it was getting dropped. And uh, gone flat through it all, the witnesses are given, saying what they're saying, and th it looked like they were going to give it in my favour, the judges, and then like there was a big arg argument breaking out, and the judge gone, we'll, and the judges got a bit pissed off because it was dragging, and the judges went, okay, we'll just let slam them, we'll just slam the sandwich, we'll just let the bloody jury decide. I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> so that was it, really, and the judge. Through the nine week trial, the jury found me guilty. Fucking hell. Which is, you know, which I got 12 years. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, heavy. So then, then, heavy. Yeah, so I ended up back in the jail, uh, gone back to Norwich. Got, I, I was also in remand, so when I've been found guilty, they've remanded me now in custody, so I could go back for it in a month's time for trial, gone back there for, they've got to get back into this sort of shit. I'm going to be in for a while. I was expecting about the 12, to be honest, because that's like the sort of sentence at, at that hell. level. And, uh, 
that's what we that's what we we we, we said twelve anyway. The barrister said to me blah blah blah, and basically, but well, what's happened now is got gone there, been sentenced, come back, been shipped out, gone to the high security jail, it's just in the jails, and then six, it was Christmas time. Six months later, just Christmas Eve, fucking letter comes through my door. Letter comes through my door. Been uh, uh, got to go to court, and that got to go to court over the uh, and the the other another another, uh, another three years on the sentence. Yeah, bad that lad. Yeah. Happy Christmas is yeah, happy three. Christmas. Was, you know, hell. you could also make you feel good. That I think the letter had been sat there for days to be honest, and the screws. Oh no screws, way. Excuse the concert. They, they waited until Christmas or something? Yeah, Christmas Eve. I've gone to Irish Christmas thing. Fucking hell, laugh. Just come back. You know, for the first couple of years that I was in jail, it was just like, pa- you know, it was just partying. They were, you know, we had, it was uh, just partying. It was, it was great. It wasn't great as <laughs> to be there, but we, you know, we, we, it was it was just like, we just didn't give a fuck. Yeah, there. it was and, easy. You know, they, we, it was it was a good few of us as well, so we had to, we had to laugh. Just, you know, we, we just had to laugh at so the time. Did they get cope? parcels in and they get on it and I think on the yeah. magic and all that. Mate. Really? Yeah. Just, would okay, you say no. that that helped you cope then? Like just just having that reckless like mentality and, and ideology to, to just like well I'm in here now. So yeah, it. well that's that basically that's what it was. You just you, that, that, that's, you, because, that's because, you just you just you, I was there, so I thought you just, just got to get on with it and make the most of it. Know what I mean? Yeah. So well, well, but there must have been some turning point now. The, the show like what, yeah, what's it was there? basically like we, everything. We were in a we were in a, we were on a bus wing on, in there. It was just the the wing was full of lad, lads from from London. Yeah, big group of Jamaican lads. They were sound. Yeah. Loads of money lads, they were all from the, the, the Gooch lads. They were a big group of them. Uh, there was a good group of us scousers there, you know what I mean? So it was the wing was signed with that chilled. Everyone had a laugh, mate. Everyone got on. When it, whenever we, there was parcels coming in, everyone was on it, you know what I mean? So if, <laughs> if someone was getting a parcel and that, they'd go round to all the firms and put, put the, the firm on the parcel, you yeah. know what I mean? So if one firm got every firm got lad, everyone yeah, looked yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. Everyone on the wing, the, all, the, all the people looked after. So the money lads looked after us. We Everyone got if someone got, you know what I mean? Yeah, Not one yeah. group of people went without if, if, if a parcel landed. Everything was great in there. What's happened now is one summer, so it was the summer, I'd just been the dentist, I'd meet two folks. Been been waiting to get in the dance about a year. Summer uh, ninety six World Cups just about to kick off. The, on the this is the Thursday night, the Friday the World Cups kicking off. Everyone's buzzing for the World Cup. Know what I mean? Because it's probably one of the best things that's gonna happen. <laughs> so everyone's buzzing to watch the World Cup, and uh, do, everyone's doing their uh, sweeps and know what I mean. The loads of uh, and and basically on uh, these two kids from Manny are messing about, pushing each other, uh, and the. Jamaican guys mopping the floor, just whistling, and he's only pushed him and he's put his foot in the bucket. And the Jamaican kids give it, wow, what's give it, give it all, what's happening, black? And they've gone, shut up, you dickhead. So, <laughs> and the starters just it caused chaos, mate. You yeah. know what I mean? Murder. So everyone's been locked up straight after tea. Everyone must have been on the phone. Let's let's go and get them. You know what I mean? All all the money in the London yeah. lads are all on the phone. See each other. Because everyone had the phone in jail. Lad, fucking hell. It was, it was, as soon as I got there, mate, it was said, yeah, there's a phone for you. <laughs> 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 as soon as I landed. Yeah, yeah. So what's happened? They must have been on the phones. Got out. They've gone and got the guy. They've ended up doing him in. Next thing, it's just gone off. Like, it was just metal. I'm stood there watching it all, fuck, just thinking, oh my God, what's all this about? You know what I mean? Just fucking, this is ridiculous. Forward two minutes later, I'm riding in the middle of it with a screw in a headlock. <laughs> fucking got the screw in a headlock. Walking them towards the door, to the outside door. Uh, and then another guy's got oh, his keys, hell. opens the gate, and we all run on the yard, all of us. You know what I mean? About 30 was on the yard now. Yes. The, the screws have come on riot teams and all that. We're on the yard refusing to move. Next thing, been there for a few hours now. So they start, they, they, they started all the tactics like calling your name in one by one. So basically, what they do is they call your name in one by one. If you don't go in, but you've refused the direct order, so you nicked. So that's that's you get nicked anyway. So I don't know what <laughs> what the fuck they say that tactic for. So everyone held out for a bit, but as it got a bit dark and a bit later, still people yeah. started going in. So basically, it's dwindled down to where the six of us then. And it's just got to the point now, it's fucking pointless, you know what I mean? You, you're going to get it anyway. So it's a, a bit surprisingly, we've gone in, lad, and like in a, in a, in a HMP jail, mate, if you go in off that guy, there'll be a, there'll be a firm there ready to smash it up, yeah? <laughs> with with these uh, private jails, mate, it's like, oh, go to your cell, you know what I mean? They're just divvies, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not like the HMP, yeah. lad. So they just put us behind the, put us behind the door, so I thought that's... 
Well, Alice, a bit weird. You would have been in an HMP, mate. You would have been took the block, yeah. It, yeah. carried by your arms and legs, and used your head as a baton on top of the doors, <laughs> right? I'm not messing. HMP screws were brutal. Compared a lot, and uh, what's happened now is the gone to sleep anyway. Woke up in the morning, it's about seven o'clock. The doors crack. Pew. I've just seen, oh my god, shields everywhere. I've, and then I've, I've, I've just looked up and seen a fucking video camera on someone's arm looking down like that. So I just knew it was like nothing's happening. <laughs> they can't do nothing to you. Yeah. So they've come, got me, took me to the segregation in, in there, which is their block, kept us in there and said, look, you're all getting shipped out, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's, there's no if so, but she's a going. So I ended up in all course. Uh, what year are we talking now, Lee? 2006. I've ended okay. up in all course, me. It's the summer. So it's the sort of ended up in all course, so I'm there for a bit. And there, some, some guys only. So basically, I'm there, just it was, it was all right there, you know what I mean? They've, they've, they've come to me, this, when they've got their, secure, their, their security in all course, they've come to me and said, Look, we know what you've fucking done and all that. We don't take kindly to fucking assault and screws them. But you know, you're in a new jail, we're going to give it a chance. Because that, again, that's another private jail. So they were like, You know, we, we'll let you stay for a bit because you've got family and that up here. It's easy for your family. And then it, a little bit, a little bit later on. I'm not sure how long it was. A guy, a guy has been on a visit, and uh, God knows what's been said and all that. But someone's been waiting outside for him and sucked his head off with a shot. You know what I mean? So we basically they, they, they shipped every, basically shipped every one of us out. You know what I mean? So no explanation or nothing. You were just gone, put on a bus, ended up. Yeah, I was working in, I was working in Croc stuff. Yeah, sports centre at that time. When when that happened. That was a big high profile thing, wasn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? It was all over the news, wasn't it? You know what I mean? So you were actually in the jail yeah. at the time. Yeah. Cause like, obviously I didn't know the people involved, but cause I worked in Crocky at the time, you had all the stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So I didn't even yeah, know what, cause I mean, we're just in there, so you don't know nothing. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so I remember, I was in Crocs' sports centre and it was all over the news and I was actually with work. And, um, and it was fucking tragic what happened, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't, it was, I don't it was, know, it was bad, know. but it was just mad because like, you were actually in that jail. Yeah, when that yeah, happened. yeah, yeah, mad, yeah, yeah. Hey, But I'm, I'm seeing it in because I was working in Crocky, like the similar sort of area where it was all what it was about, and he was actually in the jail. <laughs> it's fucking mad, that, isn't so, it? So well, what's happened now is I've been shipped down. I got sent to Dovegate, Dovegate Jail, and as soon as I've landed in Dovegate, that was that was a crazy. That was like a bit of that. That was run by. Uh, Private screws, but it went the same firm as right. Al uh, Course or Rail. Yes, yeah, so I've ended up in 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 Dovegate. There's still like I think they were more security cars or something like that, so, so, or some other yeah. security firm. And I first night in there, they've, they've only shut the jail down. Been there half an hour. Jail, everyone shut down, locked behind. Fucking that's to land a fucking uh, helicopter and the thing. Some kids been stabbed up really bad. I'm thinking, oh my god, this is going to be worse than the other places. So. <laughs> Uh, I was there a bit, so I was when I'm there, I start to get my parcels in, blah blah blah, and <laughs> fucking straight working. Because when you're in jail, you can make a lot of money, you know what I mean? And so I was getting my bits in, doing what I was doing. Uh, and uh, one one morning, they've just one morning, I've opened my door, they've just opened my door, the screen said, Down the seg, you want to blah blah blah, I fucking took me down. They said, Look, there's loads of inf intel on you, doing this, doing that for mobile phones, drugs, blah. So they said, look, we're getting rid of you. So I thought, fuck it. Like, there's only one move you go from them places. They don't send you sideways. They send you backwards. So you would go to the cates now, like the dispersals. And I thought, I don't want to fucking end up in one of them. So basically they said, you go and we're just sorting your transport out. Uh, you'd be on a bus today. The bus is coming. It was like, where am I going? They said, you're going to Laden Grange. It's like, fucking hell. They've got sky in the cells. <laughs> so I've ended up there, but it's it's the same type of, it's there, it's the same jail, the same company you run that, run that. Yeah. But it's a lot better, you know what I mean? So I ended up there and that's when I sort of like, managed to get me a, like, fucking have a good think about what I was doing, you know what I mean? And like, so, sort it all out. So, so you've had that turning point, haven't you? Um, it can't just be solely through watching a bit of sky, can it? You nah, no, 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 no. But, well, you know, I was I, I basically while I was in the prison, I didn't used to. All I, all, my only job I'd do would be Jim Audley or, and it's very hard to get in there. So or wing cleaner or work on the savory. Not with the job. I wouldn't go to workshops. I wouldn't do education. Wouldn't do nothing. I'd rather do. I'd rather not be. I'd rather have no telling myself than have to go to one of the sitting one and workshops. You know what I mean? So I'd always get a job as a wing cleaner, me yeah. or. Something manual, yeah. Later, something, no, thing. something on the something on the wing. So I'm on the wing all the time. Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So I always, I always had a wing job. 
So when I've landed in Laden now, uh, you're in on induction for a couple of weeks and then basically they said to me, look, there's nothing, there's no really jobs going, there's, there's workshops and that, but they said there's loads of courses you can do. So I'm like, fuck that, you know what I mean? So he said, it, he said, look, he said, look, it is the thing you need to go to the education or the courses or you, you, you go on basic, but basically where they take your telly off, you know, fuck, fucking hell, I've got Sky Sports in me, pad here, you know what I mean? So I thought <laughs> I'd try education. So I, I put myself down for computers and a couple of other things. But there used to be a classroom, right, in the education block and right next to the toilets. And, and used to, the, the, the guy put us, I don't know what, I don't know what it was. It turned out to be an English class anyway, but and maths, but the guy put a sign in his window saying, I do not unlock toilet doors, so don't ask guy only unlock man's and the thought, I want to go in there, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Basically I started going in there and doing English and maths with him. So that's you know inspired you just, yeah, seeing, just that seeing that little that little thing on the window, you know what I mean? I went in there oh. and I'd do that with him. Yeah. Powerful lad. Yeah, good, really, but, really good guy. And then from that I got on to doing industrial cleaning courses, gym courses, uh, I just done all the education courses yeah. really. Like even done a catering but a, a basic catering one day, uh, uh, and then basically, I always swore I'd never work in uh, workshops or places in jail, it'd always be wing or something or education then, I, and I ended up working in the kitchens then, you know what I mean? Which yeah. was a decent, decent little thing. And then, I was there for a while, like, I, I kept me head down there for ages, stopped doing all the graft, got yeah. rid of the phones. Yeah, got rid of the phones. Just you start changing the only yeah, thing you've ever so done. Yeah, so I didn't want a phone. I didn't, I didn't, for two years I switched off. I didn't even speak to people outside. I used to have the odd phone calls from my mum. The odd phones had called to the kids, but I didn't have no visitors on them for ages. I just switched off and started like, like doing, doing myself while I'm in there, not putting problems on others. So I just stayed in there and uh, that, that was it really. And then they, they come to me one, one morning and said, look, we're shipping you out, so we've downgraded your categories to, to the lower cat. Now we're shipping you to Lindholm and thinking, fucking hell, I don't want to go because it was comfy then. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a shower in my cell, like <laughs> I, had a proper, I had a shower in my cell and all that. They built a new wing house block and put showers in the cells. You could go to the gym all the time. It was sad, you know what I mean? So it was uh, quite comfy, but in terms comfy, of the yeah. in terms of the like grand scheme of things, how how long was you away from your children? Though? That must have been so. I was away for painful, it. Just, just just on in total, like. Just under eight years, know what I mean? So eight years, so you've missed out, out of your children's life for eight yeah, years? Yeah, but you know what? It's still that that has a big impact on us today because, you know, we we speak on that, but we don't really yeah. see each other as much, know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Sad, like, sad. It's like, we, you know, we, we, we speak on that, but, you know, there's not there's not a big connection. Yeah, yeah, the you, bond. You, and like, it's trying and all that, yeah. and it, you know, sometimes it gets somewhere and it goes backwards, so it's just like, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing, really. Yeah. Yeah. But then after going to education, then you've you've flipped the script kind of thing and thought, you, I'm going to reinvent myself now. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, you know, yeah. become reformed. And then what's happened? You got out and, um, and then what? No, I just moved through the jail. Then it started going through like the, the Lindholm and that. When I was in Lindholm, I'd done all my, all my gym courses there, everything. And then one day this guy come in from, from another, they, they used to have an open day. They used to send screws from here, a prison called Kirklev. It's one of the best jails in the country. You know, like it's an open jail, but it's up in the middle, northeast. Uh, so we used to come in and like doing, doing, speaking to people for then, doing interviews. And he, he, he was in the gym and he said, how long have you got left? I said, just, just over two years. He said, you're perfect, come here. He's still on the phone. So we didn't think nothing of it. And then one morning, like in, in the jail, they don't tell you you're going the night before. It's normally the mornings now, because what they say is, if but they, they used to give you a couple of days notice to tell you you're getting shipped out, right? Now they, they, they tell you the morning you're going. Well, that was what it was when I was there. And because uh, people can get on phones and all, to get you snatched off buses and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know what I mean? So he's, in the morning, they've come to me and said, look, you're yeah. going today. You'll be going this afternoon. I'm going, where? They're going, Kirk Levin. I'm like, fucking hell. Yeah. So I ended up ended up up there. It was sand, or like overnight they just lock you on on they just lock you on, on the thing and just lock the gates and you can walk around all night. So whatever <laughs> I didn't do, but when I got there, it just kept me head down because you got to do like a ten week induction, and after ten weeks they start letting you. After ten weeks they'll let you go out for a time visit and stuff like that. So for ten weeks you're stuck in there. So yeah, I just yeah. got me head down and got in the kitchens and used to do the early shifts. You'd have to start at five in the morning, so I'd get up, and I was just basically working the kitchen. If, so it's giving you structure. Yeah, and routine, so I started. So I got, this, got thing, myself yeah. into routine. Then work kitchen. Then I, I worked in the gym in there for a bit. And then basically I got got a. 
one of the lads worked in a kitchen outside in a restaurant and when he was leaving he put my name forward so they they contacted the prison said we want to speak can we have an interview so they said you, you get you get you get they give you a, a day's leave to go and speak to them so an interview so you yeah, so yeah. yeah so you know what i mean so I went down spoke to them like sound have your house so and i ended up working the last year i was there I ended up working for like uh I was out to jail nearly 12 hours a day. Yeah. So I was yeah. just sleeping there, basically. Yeah. Sleeping, <laughs> sleeping and saying, you know what I mean? I was yeah, getting paid yeah. the proper outside wage as well. Yeah. So, so that, that giving you giving you that structure, structure and platform. To work, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that um, work, working ethos, working I guess. Working ethos. That, yeah, basically, yeah. Because that, that's something I'd never really had, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now you've got that and you've come out, then what kind of things have you got involved in? Like, what what's happened with your life then? Well, when I come out, I just got. Uh, a mate of mine at the building company, so he, he he knew I'd be struggling and stuff like that. I just got out, so he, he put me on a bit of work here, uh, labouring and boarding, you no know, on, on building sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I got into that. Didn't it was lasted about six months, and then I used to I used because because it was like down Park Road. There's there's a uh, community centre there called the Belvis. Got a boxing gym, and so I just went there one day to do some training. Yeah, yeah. And got speaking to them in there and sold them. Uh, Told them and they they said to me, look, you should start some classes and there, some stuff here, do some PTs and that, which I thought I weren't really keen on. And then one day I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a go. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it done all right, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's decent. So that's when the qualification you've got in the jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. in the end of ended, ended up you know? jumping on like that. And like I'm still there today. I actually work for them now, you know what I mean? Wow. I'm actually a community worker for them, yeah. That's amazing, that like. Yeah, so by doing that, so I still I'm still self employed for myself as well, yeah, but I yeah. do stuff in there for them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm on a salary now as well. So amazing. it doesn't half help like yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. if if I'm doing crap on what I'm doing, I've still got a salary yeah. to fall back on. So it's that's decent. Yeah, though. It's decent. So how long have you been in the belt, Denley? Wow, I've been there since nearly two fourteen, two thirteen. Yeah. Wow. It's been a while, eh? Yeah. So apart from like sort of working in the belt, you've done like other stuff, haven't you? Um, like with like your, the the boxing. Yeah, um, well, I got into I got in, through working in the belt. I got into the charity boxing really. So uh, they were in boxing because. You know, there used to be a couple of white collar groups that used to hire the the, the gym yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, the, yeah. like hire it. So and like the dad is sometimes we'd be the finishing off and like we'd stay behind and watch them and have a look what they were doing and that. and like they'd ask us to help 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 and all so we'd help them out and we we'd, we'd help at the shows sometimes they'd yeah, pay us, yeah. know what I mean? It, and like s some of the shows were, were decent, like know what I mean? They were in the Adelphi and some of them were really crap, but they uh, one thing, one thing we got a gist of that, like they, they were saying they were for all charities and stuff like that, and they weren't paying no one. Yeah, but that's that's you my my, I mean? that's my no one with them as well, because there's a lot of people doing these shows and like you, you can give like I don't know five percent yeah, or something, 5%. and a lot of them don't do that, do they? Do you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of them keep most of the fucking money for themselves, you know what I mean, and just yeah, give them like the, the the bare like sort of minimum what what they have to give, do you know what I mean? And like um, the shows that Lee's being involved with. He's a uh, he's, he's raised from you've raised from yeah we've made a lot of money, money we've done you know we've done quite a lot of shows as well I think we three four shows a year for five years and like we made, we'd raise a lot of money the first the, we done the first two for uh, the White Chapel Centre uh, we I think we raised about fifteen grand over them two shows for them uh -huh. then the the next one was for the Marie Curie uh, I think that was fifteen grand as well and then after that we we just went to smaller charities the reason we done Marie Curie. It's because my sister spent like two years and like about, I think she spent about 18 weeks in there. Yeah. Okay. Fucking hell. So, Fucking hell. So uh, we just thought we'd do something back for them. Yeah. Yeah. I know you've done, you've done quite a lot there, haven't you though? Like yeah, uh, yeah. The, well, your mum was doing a lot of stuff as well, wasn't like, she? Yeah, she's gone back and helped out there. Yeah, yeah she's I remember there. Yeah. His mum carried on, to, she was doing loads of stuff in there, wasn't she? Yeah, she was out know volunteering mean? there every Monday and that. Yeah. 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 So that was sad, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but Could, yeah, me, me, what year was that, Lee? With, with yeah. your, your sister? It was a few years ago now, wasn't it? was it? five, six years ago, yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. Uh. But yeah, me, me sister was, she lived by ours and all that, and she basically she come into a little bit of trouble. She went back in with me mum. Uh, managed to get a, get, she, no, what, she managed to get a life back together, got a job. Uh, <laughs> she managed to get a house in my mum's, in my mum's coast as well, in the corner yeah, house. Yeah. So she got it all done up and everything. She's yeah. got a job, everything was going all right for it. Then one day, she come over to me mum and she looked awful and I thought, I said, what's up with you? She looked grey. Oh, fuck yeah. And she went, not on And she, they took her to the hospital and any, anyway, they done all tests and it turned out she had cancer. Fucking hell. But like, she battled it for two years and uh, she was on that 
CBD oil, uh, not the yeah. CBD, the cannabis oil, yeah, and she, it actually went. And yeah, yeah. she'd have seen it. She went from being really looking bad, and they give it, when she was on that cannabis oil, she come right back, and she just locked herself, and that battled it for two years. Then it just come back a lot worse, you know what I mean? And then okay, it's finally took its soul. She was only young, wasn't she? Yeah, thirty nine. Thirty nine. Fucking hell. And she's uh, she's got oh, kids, hasn't she? Yeah, but with yeah. that with that finger oil. <laughs> That uh, could we got my mum on the oil? We yeah, got well, my mum with the alkaline diet well, in there yeah. and the oil. My mum was off a key. Well, well, well I'll, little story. Uh, yeah. With that, with that strong, isn't it? Yeah, with that oil. Uh, a, a mate of mine knocked around at my mum one, one day. Uh, Wayne Donnelly, you know, squaddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's come to my mum one day. And okay, he's he's come, come to ours and he's got he's talking to us and he's gone. Uh, Have you tried that? He had he had a fucking syringe like that, oh, full mate. of fucking black tar. And I said, what is it? And he said, keep it. But I never took it, so I put it in the fridge. It'd been there for ages. <laughs> it had been there for months in the fridge. So what, one weekend, we've been, we've had a night, we've, and like, I've been on it, and I couldn't fucking sleep like, and I thought, I'm going to try that. So I went down, boiled the kettle, fucking put it over the kettle. So, so I dabbed and then bam, bam, a couple of dabs on the tongue, went to bed. <laughs> so I, I, I was I remember saying to Donna do us a favour phone work and tell them I can't move so <laughs> God, that was it that was a bad way that was, that was, that was at 8.30 that was at like 8 o'clock in the morning so Donna's done that Donna's been to work come home come in I'm still lying the same like Superman <laughs> like that so oh, next mate. thing the thought I've had the thought I've had a stroke and uh, <laughs> so uh, it's got later in the evening I've still not moved so they've, they've only decided to phone an ambulance and Oh. I've ended up in the hospital. I'll have to see if I can get you the picture for it. The picture, there's a picture of me in the hospital. Like that. <laughs> well, the, so, the Madonna's panicking, so she's for my mum. My mum's come straight up the hospital, and my mum just said he's stoned. Because <laughs> my mum had seen it all, my sister, so she just knew. Mm. <laughs> oh, but, I swear to God, it took me about eight days to come back to come back together, you know what I mean? Lad, it was fucking off, heavy. Heavy, heavy. I got me married, didn't I? Loads of it. Um, mm. When me married with uh, cancer. Uh, and, uh, so when I got here, I got myself on mm. to see, like, everyone was saying, oh, you just have a little bit. And the lad's like, lad, you just have a dab on your finger. And you know me, I'm having a dab. What the fuck I'm going to do? I, don't I was like, I was like, I had a dab. It, then I done another dab. I was like, ah, fuck it, fuck it, ah, fucking loads of it all over. <laughs> like that, right? Next minute, I'm like, that going, oh my God. And I, and like, I thought to see me mate come in the house. I went to him in the back. There was no one there. And then I thought me mate come in the, in the back garden, but you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm in here, lad. And I was like, there was no one there. And I was like, oh, fuck it, oh, yeah. I need to go to bed. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, smoky lad out of Friday. Like, fucking I just, I just, I just, I just, fuck, I just, <laughs> I just thought I wouldn't be able to do certain stuff. Like, God, I, was that, I was, that, was that fucked up. I just thought I wouldn't be able to do certain stuff again. You know what I mean? I was like, you know. <laughs> the, what I mean? They're prescribing it now, though, believe it. Yeah, but yeah, you know but what? This, it's is like, this, is just, this is just like what people make. Oh, and then this, they sell it. You know what I mean? This, yeah, is, yeah. this is like abuse. Yeah. But, uh, so that's a different you know, This business. is like the strong, yeah. the strong, so, yeah. So, like, yeah. So, it's, so my mum knew straight away from my sister being on it because my sister used to go into like three day comas where she'd be out for the count because she'd take a, a lot of that stuff because of the pain she was in and stuff. But oh, fucking hell. Heavy. You know, I was at, this, at the time my sister was battling that though. My other sister Lindsay had the baby and she sort of hit the pregnancy and then she, she's one day, there's another baby, but another oh, family hell. member. So, uh, <sighs> So the baby's been born, and it was like Christmas. I remember it was in the flower with Donna, and Donna said to me, "said Shall we have a bevy and that?" And I said, "We we had a drink, and we only had a couple of drinks, yeah, and yeah. just went to bed. Um, it was Christmas night. I just went to bed. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And I remember getting a phone call at seven o'clock in the morning, and no one ever, like a family member, never phones. It was, and it was my sister, my dad. So she's phoned us, and she's gone Lee, the baby, and I'm thinking. But that Alan's his baby had died in his sleep. Oh, fucking hell. <sighs> so that that's what's happened. And yeah. uh, then six months later, Maria went. Fucking hell. Like a lot of shit to deal with in, in yeah, like a short yeah. space of time. Oh, breaking that. Yeah. Oh, breaking. Yeah, fucking hell. Quite a lot, know what I mean? Yeah, and that's quite a bit going so, on at the time as well. So, as, as a family, you have all just like supported one another. Yeah. Like, in that, like, like we had, had a lot of stuff going on. We were, At the time, we had boxing shows we were doing. In the middle of it, we had we had events as well, and we, we you know we didn't stop. For, we we kept them going. Like yeah. we didn't want to let no one down, especially with the boxing, because it helps. The money was going to uh, autistic kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you've done loads of stuff, haven't you, lad? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's why I liked your story, Lee, because 
you know, you were a bad lad. And then, like, the stuff you've been through, you've been to jail f- numerous times, you know what I mean? And then, like, and, and then when you've come out now, the stuff that you've gone through, like, raising all that money for charity, mm. and then, you you know, the actual stuff with your sister passing yeah. away and then your other sister losing the baby and that and dealing with that and still coming through it, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a... Uh, it's admirable, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, what, you, what you're doing in life and the, and the fact that you're sticking to, like, the right path, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you what know I mean? there is times when you think, fucking hell, you, you could do, do hard, something, it? but it's hard, but you yeah. just got to try not to get involved in it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Just got to be strong. I think to myself, you know what I mean, the path that I'm on, I'm saying, you know what I mean, if, if, if people wouldn't have, like, sort of reached out for me with the stuff, what I'm doing, with all this fighting demon stuff, I would have got back into my old life myself, do you yeah. know what I mean? I think, like, yeah. because... People are reaching out to you all the time. It sort of keeps you on that yeah. path because you think there's somewhat looking up to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like I want to like sort of stay there and stay on that like path rather mm. than like letting myself down and then letting everyone else down on top of it. So it makes it easier, doesn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? that, these nights we do help a lot of people as well. Know what I mean? Well, that's what I mean because I, I mean again, the reason why I why Metley I put on a camp, <laughs> I put on a, a, a boxing camp because with this to do with the fighting demons, it was basically just a free camp just to help people. Who, you know what I mean to, to to go on a show so I ended up with about 40 people turning up to the exercise for less you know what I mean and Lee was one of them and then um, and then out of them 40 people we ended up with about 7 people you know what I mean it was just me fucking doing them in every week and then, and then Lee just kept turning up and one time when we left he obviously told me about the prison stuff and then and then the rave stuff and it was just funny how we had like sort of similar things because we both used to go to the same club and then Lee was the only person that I ever told that I used to MC you know what I mean because um Obviously, I used to MC back in the day, but no one knew that. For all my fighting, from when I started fighting at like sort of 18, 19, no one knew that I was MCing because I was still actually MCing at 18, but I never actually told anyone because yeah. it was a bit like sort of frowned upon. So Lee was the only person I told that I said to him, believe it or not, lad, back in the day, I used to MC to the hardcore techno and jungle and yeah, all that. Yeah, and he was yeah, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, he started doing them shows, the Back to the Dog. Yeah, yeah. So then he just said, after he'd done a couple of them, do you want to come down? So I, I got in touch with Silly, you know what I mean? Like my old DJ, DJ Silly G. And, uh, and I said about going down to his event, so he gave us a few free tickets. And when I went down, it was like, oh my God, like, it was like the fucking dock. It was just like, the fu- it was like took me yeah, back to 1994. Years, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, seriously, the people up there, but all from our era. Do you know what I mean? It was like, fucking oh, hell. Yeah. It was fucking. You kept in that lifestyle. It was just yeah. for our thing, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, whatever people are growing up with now are doing their thing now. That was our thing, you know mm. what I mean? The doc was our, like, our, our thing, you know yeah. what I mean? And so, like, it's got a special place. That's where I met Sarah. It's got a special place in my heart, you know what I mean? And that night, and then, obviously, he said, do you want to come back? So it's weird, because now that I've been performing for him and then started doing a bit of co-promoting with him, the show's a boss, lad. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've had some boss acts yeah, on Yeah, like... Do you know what I mean? One of the bit first ones we got was uh, Shades of Rhythm, you know what I mean? They... Yeah. they they the start. They, they made the music like in in 1991, 1990. They were making the tunes that the DJs were playing. Yeah. Know what I mean? We've had them. We've had. So you'll have heard songs, right? Songs right to this day that are made remixed of Shades of Rhythm. Yeah. Shades yeah. of Rhythm yeah. actually made the original songs. So you might have heard a song that's been remixed about fifty times, yeah. but the actual yeah. original piano sounds and stuff like that that's was from done. them. Wow. Same, you know I mean? same with Dawson Free. They've done they've done a lot of the same like a lot a lot a lot of the original first rave tracks that they're, they're all re, they're still they're still remixed at this day and put out there on a new as a yeah. new, new style of music. Yeah, new style, new yeah. new tune. We've had top was on they're, they're like pioneers the uh, them and rap are like Pioneers of the racing when the racing kicked off, they were like the big big acts booked on the stages, like the Fantasias and stuff like that. Know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's um, just some really good, really good yeah, events. You know what I mean? Stu Allen, who you know, everyone knows Stu Allen off the radio, don't they? From Manchester, yeah, he's like, yeah. The, and we even brought DJ Viper back. He Viper's was back, back on. Back. Sam, we brought Sam to play back. Be loads of DJs. You know what I mean? That have, yeah. that have actually started back DJing because of these events. We've managed to get Ramos and Mali back together. You know what I mean? Which, so they're pioneers themselves, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, XTC. John Neil, yeah. Yeah, brilliant, lad. Brilliant. Well, Lee, thanks for coming on, lad. Nice one, Brad. Nice one. Nice one, 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 lad. This podcast is sponsored by Riddle Hulk Builders. I want to inspire people to train so they can see the power of exercise and what it can do for the brain. Do you want to change your lifestyle? 
your outlook on life, physique, and have a laugh while doing so. I don't take myself too seriously, and I like to create a fun atmosphere in the gym. Working alongside some brilliant boxing coaches in Halewood ABC. It's about bringing the community together. In Synetico Fitness Centre, there's boxing based fitness classes and boss PTs. We have a female only boxing boogie with the DJ too. I've got a big mouth and a big heart. I like to speak my mind, encourage others, and help people to open up. There's a podcast coming, a documentary. I've used sport and boxing to fight my demons. It can help you fight yours. <laughs>